Okay, so given A is equal to this stuff and B is equal to this stuff, we want to find these two things. So what we're talking about in this video is sets, okay? And we're going to be focusing in on the intersection of two sets and the union of two sets. This is critical, critical uh, concepts in mathematics and pretty much any level of math, even basic math, but uh, especially as you get into more advanced math, sets just become increasingly important. But uh, everybody should be able to understand these basic concepts of intersection and union. So if you've never um, seen you know, sets before, if this is all new to you, just stick around. Uh, believe me, at the end of this video, you'll walk around with a happy face. You'll be like, hey, I learned about sets today. That's pretty cool. You know, but believe me when I tell you, you you'll encounter concepts of sets, all right? Uh, somewhere in your mathematics journey, you know, even if you're studying more basic math. So we want to really focus in and start off with the uh, fundamentals. So we're going to uh, get to that in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. If you're interested, you can check out my math help program by following the link in the description below. But basically, I have 100 plus different comprehensive math courses. So, um, you know, I have all the big courses, Algebra 2, Algebra 1, Geometry. These are full, complete courses. Um, you know, uh, you know, they're not just little tutorials and whatnot. But I also have many, many specialty courses for those of you preparing for special type of exams and tests in your life. So a lot of people are studying math outside of just taking a math course. A lot of you out there are taking like the GED, SAT, ACT, um, taking a teacher certification exam or trying to get into nursing school or trying to pass the CLEP exam or the Accuplacer or the Alex exam. There's a ton, right, of different uh, reasons why people are studying math and it doesn't, doesn't necessarily mean that you're taking a math course. So uh, I have many, many test preparation courses that are, are very, very good. I think you'd be happy with them if you are studying for those particular exams. Now, I also have many um, uh, members that uh, are homeschoolers or taking independent studies. So if that's your situation, I can help you out. And obviously, if you're stuck in a particular course and you know you just need help beyond what's going on in your class, then I can help you out as well. Now, if you really want to help yourself, you got to look at your notes. Okay, this is the starting point for everything. And over decades of teaching mathematics, I call this my golden rule of math. And that is those students who take great notes almost always end up looking like this guy at the end of the year. They're like very happy with their grades. And the reverse is true. Um, those students who don't take notes, take sloppy notes, generally look like this when they get their grade. They're like, why did you do this to me, teacher? You know, you're so mean and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But of course, I'm like, where's your notes? And they're like, notes? Uh, what are those? I'm not into notes. I have my best friend. You know, he takes better notes than I do. Plus, math is the perfect time for me to do my homework for my other classes. And I got to keep up with my, you know, social media, etc. Listen, I get it. I was a student once. I'm not trying to pick on you too much. And by the way, if I had a cell phone back when I was going to school, well, boy, I tell you, it would have been really bad. So you're completely distracted. You got so many things pulling at your focus that... It makes it very, very hard to learn mathematics. The key to learning math is to uh, remain focused, okay, engaged. And the only way, like evidence of doing that or the process of doing that is for you to be actively taking notes, all right? Uh, it's just bulimia on this one. Okay, there's a lot of things I can't do, but, you know, I teach math pretty well, uh, not because I have a degree in math or a master's degree. It's because I have a lot of experience, okay? And I've seen this year in and year out. So that is... Yeah, if you're not taking great notes, you can watch this video. You can do a lot of other things. You're still going to flounder. Okay, you got to fix that. But in the meantime, you need something to study from. Okay, so I offer detailed, comprehensive math notes to include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find links to those notes in the description of this video. All right, so now let's get into sets. Believe me when I tell you, we're going to end up with the happy face at the end of this video. So, what is a set? And some of you are thinking, sets, hmm, is that like a TV set, you know, like an old school TV, or maybe like a train set, right? Maybe, maybe you're thinking a train set. Uh, and if you're thinking train set, I think that's a, probably a pretty good way to think of sets, okay? And 
in mathematics, a set basically we put um, uh, sets or a collection of items or numbers or anything you want them to be. Okay, it's just a collection, like a train set. You know, we have this in a box, okay? So this is a set. It's a set of what? Little train parts, okay? But in mathematics, we have a set of generally numbers or can be variables like this. And uh, the way we, uh, we know we're dealing with the set is typically we have brackets like this. Okay, we have the little squiggly brackets, or you can have these brackets like this one, two, three, four, Okay, that's the kind of most typical type of uh, ways we describe this collection, which we call sets. And these guys inside the sets, okay, are called the elements or members of that set. And I can name this set different ways. I, I mean, different ways. I don't want to just walk around and say, describe this set as one, two, three, four. You know, I would want to refer this to, you know, a name. Maybe we'll call this set A. Okay, you could write it like that, or you can write it like set A, like so. Okay, so here I have another set. Again, um, you know, it uh, doesn't have to be numbers. That, uh, these things, and the, by the way, these things here are called elements. Or these are the members. And uh, one thing that you can write, you could say like one is an element of set A. Okay, so there's different things that we need to learn about sets, but right now we're going to be focusing in in on two huge concepts, all right, uh, about when we're dealing with two or more sets, and that is the intersection and the union, okay? So this is a quick review on what a set, uh, what sets are in mathematics, and um, hopefully uh, most of you out there are fairly familiar with it, but if you weren't, you're like, you know, this is logical enough, you know, basic enough. You know, again, this doesn't have to be rocket science, you know, this is fundamental elementary mathematics, but uh, let's go ahead and get uh, into our problem here and figure out what the union and intersection uh, are given these two sets. All right, so here I have set A, okay? It's a collection of these elements, these members, and we have A, B, C, D, E, and F. And here I have set B and its uh, members, its elements here are C, F, G, and H. And what we're asked to find is this upside down U, okay? This upside down U like this, okay? And it's not an N, it's not like that. Okay, or let me just write this a little better. When you do this intersection symbol, it's not like this, it's specifically like that, okay? So uh, thinking, just think of it as like an upside down U. And one way to kind of remember that this is intersection is if you put a little I and you had this upside down U, you're going to start spelling out the word intersection, okay? So the intersection happens to be between these two sets, uh, C and F, okay? That is the answer, right? So the intersection is a little set. It's a set made up of uh, its elements, C and F. But what are we talking about here? Well... Let's just think about the word intersection, okay? Intersection, what are we talking about? Well, here, let's just kind of visually think about it this way. Here's set A, and we have A, B, uh, C, D, E, and F. That's in set A. In set B, we have C, F, G, and H. Okay, and if you're like, oh, okay, I think I know where this guy's going. Yes, you know, uh, both C and F are members of both B and A, okay? But if we were kind of overlap these two uh, sets visually, this is called like a Venn diagram right here. These guys here are um, both, these are the members that are in both sets, okay? And we can kind of see it the, uh, in this manner, okay? They, there's an overlapping because both C and F are members of both A and B. So that is what the intersection is. It's, it's uh, those elements that are part of both uh, sets, okay? And then we'll just write that as a set, and that's pretty much it, okay? Just think about that. This is where these two sets overlap. Now, sometimes two sets don't overlap, but the elements that are inside where uh, um, if two sets do overlap, this intersection area, those elements inside, we can write this way, okay? Pretty simple stuff. Now... Let's take a look at union, all right? Now, union is a U, and it spells like the word union. So here's our set A, set B, same thing. And we're going to 
uh, determine what the union is. Now, uh, you know, we think of this word union as like a marriage of uh, sorts, right? So, you know, two people have a union or whatever the case is. It's a combination, all right? Like a combination of of two people being joined together. But here we're going to uh, marry two sets. We're going to like, there's going to be a union formed. So that means we're going to have all of these guys and all of these guys in one big happy set. Okay. And now that set is the following. All right. We're going to have all these members, A, B, C, D, E, and F, A, B, C, D, E, and E, and F. Now we look here, here we have C and F over here. Okay. C and F. Uh, and then we have G and H, okay? So this is the total, uh, all the elements from this plus all the elements of this. We don't need to repeat just because there's a C here and there's a C here. We don't need to write it twice. But these are all the elements that were combined together uh, between both sets, okay? That is the union, all right? So all these elements plus all these elements and then whatever repeats, we just need to write one time. That is the union. And you can kind of look at it uh, this way. Okay. So it's this plus all these guys. All right. That would be the union between those two sets. So, you know, this is pretty much basic, basic set uh, theory concepts. And you oftentimes see this in Venn diagrams. So if you're not familiar with Venn diagrams, I teach that as well. Venn diagrams, um, so you'll see things where things like this overlap, you know, there's all kinds of nice little problems that you can encounter, but these are the kind of the fundamental, uh, concepts. And, um, again, I believe, uh, right off the top of my head, I'm sure I've done, I know I've done, uh, other videos. I've done so many videos over the years, like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of videos, but I'm pretty sure I've done, um, videos on Venn diagrams. Probably it's going to be in my pre-algebra or algebra one playlist, but I definitely teach it in my math courses. So, um, you know, again, important stuff. Now, hopefully, you know, we're finishing up with this video. You're ended up with a happy face. You're like, okay, I learned something or I confirmed what I already thought I knew or I strengthened my knowledge. That's the whole point of these videos is for you to get better. Okay. My job, my goal, my passion is to teach math in a clear and understandable way. Okay. So you can stay excited about it and you can continue to grow your math skills. All right. Um, okay. So again, you already know about my uh, channel. There's plenty of videos there for you. Um, but, uh, you know, if this video did help you out in some way, please consider smashing that like button. That helps me out. And please consider subscribing. And again, you can find my best help by following the links in the description of the video. All right. So with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.